You're an orphan, Beth. I'm fine being alone. I feel safe in an entire world of just 64 squares. Well, creativity and psychosis often go hand in hand. Or for that matter. Genius and madness. When when Beth gets adopted, it look I I thought the story was going to go one way in terms of building the relationship between, and then it goes uh, uh, another. Was it sort of, you know, enjoyable and challenging to sort of toe that line? That it's not a toxic relationship. It's complicated, but it's never toxic, which I thought where it was going to land. I know. I, I kind of enjoyed that you don't know where it's heading um, when you meet Alma. Part of why I liked this character is she is such a complex character. She can't really be easily summed up. She obviously has a lot of pain there and you do kind of think, oh no, what, what is this situation Beth is getting herself into? But they become this unlikely duo. You know, there's something about Beth that really needs a mother-like figure, even if it's not a traditional mother figure and Alma needs someone to care for. And so they kind of slowly, slowly build this trust with each other and it ends up being exactly what they each need. They need each other. Um, and it's it's very sweet, but it's it's hard one. It's not immediate, it's not easy. It doesn't just come naturally to either of them. And if anything, they're kind of like two feral animals who are kind of trying to like figure out how to let the other one in. Mm. Um, but that's what was fun about the character too. Well, let me ask you this, because I talked to you uh, in a junket setting for uh, your last film that you directed. Yeah. And, and I have to say, I was watching all episodes, did not recognize you. And then when I read that I was going to interview you, I was like, holy crap. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, Thank you. But, well, they but cut off, you know, I look very different. They cut off all my hair. Uh, well, I know. But what I'm what I'm getting to saying, I wonder if the, her agent has the same problem in the sense of, it's like, do I send her for acting, this script for acting or directing? How do you sort of decide... Uh, which muscle you want to flex as a storyteller. Um, I mean, truthfully, I haven't acted in 10 years. This is the first time I've done any acting in a long time. Wow. Um, so it it was a really fun, it's like I, I was an actor. That's such a part of my history. It's how I came to directing. I always talk about, when I do interviews about directing, I always talk about my history as an actor and that that's how I communicate with actors. So um, in many ways, I felt like I needed to kind of keep that muscle moving. I needed to kind of flex that muscle that I hadn't flexed in so long and try to be vulnerable and be an actor again. And Scott is a dear friend. I couldn't probably act for a director I didn't respect because I am a director and I wouldn't be able to like let go and turn off that part of my brain. So. You know, this was a departure. This is not going to be my the thing I spend all of my time on acting these days because I have too many movies I want to make and series I'm going to make. But, um, but it was so fun and it was mm -hmm. such a nice reminder of what that skill set is and what it and it will help me, I think, in my future directing to be able to, when I'm asking something of an actor, it reminds me what I'm asking. You know. All right, so my time is up and you did fantastic. So thank you so much for taking the oh, time good. to talk about thank it. Thank you. All right, you guys stay healthy wherever you are. Thank you so you much. You too. Have a good day.